Right, so here we are with Mark Stanway and Mo Birch. So Mark, this evening, we have an evening with Mark Stanway and Mo. So we'd like to hear a little bit about what you've got uh, set for tonight um, and also some of the coming dates. And then we'll get into Kingdom of Madness, uh, your great new band. And, but yeah. we'll talk about the evening first. Okay, yeah. Um, it's sort of evolved and continues to evolve, especially with uh, Roger comparing it for me, which is brilliant. I, I, he makes it so much more easy for me to be able to do it. But it, it, it's not a concert. I play bits and pieces all the way through it and uh, play a couple of favourites. And thank goodness Mo sings. Um, she sings a little more done song. We do the whole song. And she's actually on the actual record, Storyteller's Night. So I, I don't have a problem with, uh, and she sings it beautifully, you know. And it's nice to hear a different voice on something that she's got a legacy with Magnum. You know, she's been on several albums, she's toured with Magnum. So, and I still can't remember the lyrics. <laughs> no, a ton of lyrics there. I mean, they are brilliant, but they're not uh, kitchen sink lyrics by any means. And um, you can't make them up, can you, if you forget where you are? I mean, they're brilliant. One of my favourite lyric, uh, lyricists of all time. Him and Bernie Telpin are my favourites, you know. It's fantastic. So I've started off with a compliment for Tony. I was going to ask you, what do the songs of, of Magnum mean to you? Um, a lot of them have got a lot of different meanings. Um, obviously it becomes personal. I mean, in the early days, Chase the Dragon, for instance, my first album with Magnum back in 1980. Uh, there it is, yeah. Um, that was my first album and uh, I couldn't wait to hold, because it was all vinyl in those days as well, to hold this record sleeve with this wonderful artwork by Rodney Matthews and see my name on it and um, and, and create the keyboard parts for, for it, you know, it's very much a, I mean, the songs were the songs, I mean, Tony's a great songwriter and, um, and he, uh, what, I hear piano on this, what, what do you think you should do? And, We'd come up with parts, and it was a very creative time, and obviously exciting for me. Um, so, it depends on which song. They've all got different reasons for being personal, you know, and there's some songs which I, I didn't particularly like, which I, I struggled to come up with a good part for, because they didn't hit it's me nice the same freedom, way. It freedom, was it? Yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was wonderful freedom, and um, artistic freedom, and. The arrangement of the songs was done by the band and, you know, it, 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 I felt a very important creative part of the band, you know, which was, I did that click, Did that click straight away after Richard left, you came in, did you feel a pressure to make your mark, like with the, with the intro to the first track, or did it just happen naturally? Um, two things on that one. Um, obviously, I'd known the guys before I joined the band, not, not intimately, but... I, we'd knew each other because we were both in different bands at the railway in Birmingham. I think uh, the band I was in was Rainmaker and we played Wednesday nights and had about 16 people in and uh, <laughs> Magnum would play on a Thursday night and it was packed out. <laughs> and, uh, um, Richard, uh, we're very good friends and have been for a long time now, but he, they were big boots to fill because what I'd done before that was more on the jazz rock type of thing, you know, which is a great grounding for chord knowledge, etc. But, you know, suddenly I've got to use mini moves and and all of these things, you know. So they were big boots to fill. So it was a little intimidating playing the older songs, because obviously uh, we didn't go out and do the whole of Chase the Dragon. Yeah. We did lots of stuff off Kingdom of Madness and Magnum too. Changes. And yeah. Board, that's the uh, yeah. And you're going to hear them again soon. Um, so they were big boots to fill. So that I found a little intimidating. Um, as for my own parts, they're the easiest things to play a second time because they came from you in the first place. You know, so I think that answers the question. Yeah, brilliant. So, <laughs> so, so coming because Magnum went through a couple of phases. It was the early successful phase, and there was the kind of the the, the record company driven you know, good night LA phase, and then there was the the the, the rebirth. In, for the last few albums as well. Yeah. During that latter period, did, your, did you feel your role had changed from a kind of contribution standpoint? Um, not the, the latter part, because I mean, if I mention one of the last albums we did before Tony split the band up, 
um, was Rock Art. That was one of the happiest, fantastic albums I ever made. Um, and I was talking to Mickey Barker about it only last week. And it was great because Mickey go, no, 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 let's not do that there. Let's drop two beats here before we come back in. And there's a band creating it, you know. Yeah. And I, I don't care how good a songwriter you are, Tony is one of the best. The drums are going to be a much better if the drummer comes up with the parts. If you want a piano played, use a piano player. Don't use the computer one finger at a time and say, play that. And, 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 and I feel sorry for the, the later albums. The songs are every bit still as good. But the control thing came in and um, that stifled me. Mm -hmm. But it was only when we reformed did it start feeling like that. For me, you know, it was all too much laid on the plate. What what was expected of me, and um, as opposed to come up with the stuff on that. There you go. Because we used to get given a cassette tape with acoustic yeah. guitar and Bob singing. You yeah. know, and it's, so there was no prior influence. I mean, obviously, I'd come up with things, and I'd go to Tony. Said that's crap. So we wouldn't use that. You know, I mean, it, it, it was like he he was always in charge of the song, but a lot more creativity and, and that went down and down and down personally in my opinion so of the of the latter albums what was there was there the one that you felt was um your favorite of the last period or or would you always go back to kind of rock art and the previous I'm afraid ones i've got to go back i mean i will state again the songs um a good song can be played just on an acoustic guitar and um, and you could do that with any one of Tony's songs, so I, I still take my hat off to him as a songwriter. Freedom Day, do you remember that song? Only, only slightly, to be honest. Well, actually, there's a nice piano intro, and it sounds like a piano part, you know. And um, so that there are certain songs on certain of the later albums that I enjoyed. You know, I enjoyed all the songs, but from a personal point of view, when I was playing on them. Um, it, it ceased to feel like a band to me. It brings us to where we where we are right now. So you, you departed the band. Yeah. You did some um, some some thinking about what to do next. You're doing this wonderful series of uh, of evenings with. Yeah. But more importantly, there's a new band. Tell yeah. us about the new band. Well, that wasn't my intention when I left Magnum back in December 2016. Last thing on my mind. I never had any <coughs> thoughts of doing that. And as time went on, I uh, did a couple of shows, reformed Grand Slam, worked with Mickey Barker again, um, who I've got to say is just the finest drummer I've ever worked with, and Jimmy Copley, rest his soul. But Mickey for Magnum is the best drummer the band ever have and ever will have had, you know. Yeah. Uh, just an inspiring musician. Um, and I put him together with Neil Murray in that original Grand Slam Reformation, and suddenly I'm playing to a rhythm section from heaven. I'm going, yes, I can play with this, you know. Mm. There's a bass player that's playing on the back of the beat instead yeah. of on the front of it all yeah. the time. I mean, it's tiny, but it makes such a difference. And you've got a drummer that's doing the same thing. It's just, it, 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 it's difficult to put it into words, but when it feels right, it is magical. So I had the magic of that, and obviously um, Lawrence Archer on guitar, who I pulled into Grand Slam in the early days, um, who also did a two with Magnum, so I know how he could play a Magnum song. Yeah. I was talking to Richard Bailey, and uh, because we're friends, and it, we were talking about reforming, um, or me, getting involved with the phenomena thing. Yeah. And um, one thing led to another, and... Uh, how about we do what the punters have been asking for yeah. for as long as I can remember? Play the Magnum Classics. You know, yeah. another compliment to Tony. People want to hear this. So we'll play them. He yeah. doesn't have to because he doesn't want to. Yeah. Fine. And we're going out on tour when they're not. So I'm not trying to compete. Um, there's five people in this band that have all had a legacy with Magnum. So I can't see it as a tribute band either. And I've got a great singer in Chris Uzi. I, we have got a great singer in Chris Uzi. And of course, Mo. 
Um, the two-part harmonies that Wally Lowe used to do with Bob were so special when you look back at, say, the Wings of Heaven video mm. and thing, and you listen to how tight and how he got the character of Bob's voice off to a T, you know. It's funny, the singing, singing bass players, whether it's ELO with, with Kelly um, or other bands, like Van Halen, Michael Anthony, with it, there's a lot of singing bass players that people actually don't realise are providing that backup. And the timing, the pitch, the character of the voice fitted the main vocal. And Mo was in Go West for, for many years, and um, Pete Cox is also one of my favourite singers Me who I've, I've been privileged to work with. Um, and I used to go and watch that and, and hear Mo doing the two part harmony with Pete Cox, and it would just lift every hair on my back, you know, I couldn't sit still. I've, we've now got Mo and Chris Uzi. Yeah. We're going to recreate those expensive two part <laughs> harmonies bang on. So, I, you know, I'm. Mo's not there as a backing singer either. I mean, Mo will be singing songs in her own right there too. So it's a band, as I say. Five people on that stage have all shared a legacy with Magnum. So this and a tribute band. Oh, it's really, certainly really a tribute to, this to Tony's thing. wonderful songs. So Mo, because we have got Mo Boats here in the room as well. How much are you looking forward to the Kingdom of Madness? Oh, immensely, like Mark said. You know, just, yeah. I love his voice. So, you know, when we get to rehearsals, then... Uh, Hopefully we'll get that gel that... Uh... And the songs are in the original key? Every, everything is as it was. If you listen to the Wings of Heaven video, mm-hmm. as a prime example, um, and we're, we're doing several of those, I won't mm. give the game away yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we've got to rehearse them. But we've got like 19 or 20 songs, which we will pick 17, maybe 18 out okay. of. And things like Wild Swan, I can say, will be back in the show. And that's extremely high. And fair play, you know, I mean, I can't believe how good Bob is still doing it. 71, 72, whatever it he, is. He is incredible, I mean. Mm. Um, but that was a high, high note to reach. So I've got a younger guy in called Chris Uzi who <laughs> yeah. can reach that note. And so I want to just give the punters, this is not competition with Magnum, you know. I'm so proud to have been a part of it for so long. But to be able to reproduce those songs as they were, yeah. you know, is exciting for me. It's a passion. I like the idea of doing like a, you know, like a Magnum song that's, you know, was maybe kind of rocky, but do it in a ballad. You know. I'm not asking Mo or Chris to try and copy Bob. You can't copy Bob, he's a one-off. Let's put Bob to one side. Yeah. Those songs done by great musicians and yeah. singers worthy so it will be great i promise you so we're looking forward to the tour so the, the dates are in in december this year yeah uk. it's all up there and being updated regularly so so mo mark remains for me to say thanks Andrew. great show tonight Brilliant. and thank we'll see you, you soon thank you. yeah all yeah, the best thanks. cheers, cheers.